Today, London Victoria is a bustling station filled with commuters and holidaymakers. It's London's second busiest terminus, serving destinations across Surrey, Sussex and Kent in the southeast of England. Built by the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway and the London, Chatham and Dover Railway, Victoria was known as the gateway to the continent for its connections to the Channel ports and ferries to France and Belgium. But during the First World War, the station was the scene for an altogether different type of passenger as a departure and arrival point for millions of soldiers travelling to and from the front line. These men would have travelled by train to the channel ports of Dover and Folkestone where they would have taken a steamer ship to France before travelling on to the battlefields. Before the war many of these steamers, like the trains, would have been used for luxurious travel and some of the troops might even have been on them. Now requisitioned by the Royal Navy, they transported soldiers, many of whom may not return. Richard Jack painted Return to the Front Victoria Station in 1916. It captures a poignant scene as soldiers, their period of leave at an end, say goodbye to their loved ones and return to the fighting. From the early days of the war, troops were permitted regular periods of leave to allow them much needed physical and emotional rest from the stress of battle. Before the war, this station platform would have been the departure place for leisure travel. But now, these soldiers in Richard Jack's painting would have been travelling to an all the more dreadful destination, the battlefields of Europe. Richard Jack was born in Sunderland in 1866 and studied at the York School of Art, housed within the Art Gallery buildings. He gained a national scholarship to the Royal College of Art, and two years later he won a travelling scholarship. He moved to Paris to study at the Académie Julienne and the Atelier Colorossi. On his return from Paris in the early 1890s, he began work as an illustrator for the Idler magazine, before gaining success as a portrait painter. He later painted King George V and Queen Mary. He exhibited at the Royal Academy and in 1920 was made a Royal Academician. Richard Jack presented Return to the Front to the Art Gallery in 1928 and it's one of the most popular paintings in the collection today. We see soldiers saying goodbye to loved ones. Some laugh with comrades while others kiss their relatives goodbye. This would have been an all too familiar scene during the years of the war. It's on the scale of a large history painting but it's not a battle scene. It's more of an emotional goodbye scene and you can almost step into the painting and put yourself in the picture. Richard Jackson fought in the war, so it would have had a personal meaning for him as well. In the foreground, a lone Scottish soldier sits in contemplation with apparently no one to see him off. Reflecting our own feelings of empathy, a newspaper girl approaches him. She may be a Salvation Army girl, perhaps a wren, or from some other voluntary group offering aid and assistance to the men as we're seen at stations across the nation. Soldiers from all over the country pass through Victoria Station on their way to and from their leave. Like the lone Scottish soldier, the troops in Jack's painting may have travelled many hundreds of miles from their homes before boarding the trains off the coast. It's not possible to identify the regiments of the soldiers, although Jack evidently used real army kit as a model for his painting as the equipment appears to be depicted with accuracy. Prior to conscription in 1916, voluntary recruitment was in place with advertising campaigns to encourage men to enlist. The press and popular literature glorified the war in order to maintain public morale, while posters carried slogans like, there's room for you, enlist today, showing illustrations of troop trains like this one in Jack's painting. In 1916, however, the Military Service Act came into force meaning that any unmarried or widowed man between the ages of 18 and 41 must enlist. The men in Jack's painting may have been a combination of volunteers and conscripted men, pulled away from their homes, families and jobs to the service of their country. 
What the men met when they arrived on the front lines of France and Belgium was like nothing they could have imagined. The war was unprecedented in scale and intensity. Advances in weaponry and military technology made it a war like none that had gone before. And the introduction of machine guns, poison gas attacks, tanks and aerial combat. It was a war born out in the trenches, where conditions were horrific and terrifying. The human cost of war is inconceivable, with 12 million men killed. During the war, governments were keen to appoint artists to record the events happening on the battlefields. These official war artists travelled to the front line, experiencing the fight in first hand. In late 1916, shortly after the completion of Return to the Front, Richard Jack was commissioned by the Canadian government to paint the Second Battle of Ypres and became their first official war artist. He later went to France with the Canadian regiment and made further paintings of the war. He emigrated to Canada in the 1930s, where he died in 1952, and many of his large-scale war paintings are now in Canadian collections. The men arriving at the station would have been travelling for many hours, sometimes days, and would have been hungry, cold and tired. Many different voluntary and charitable societies were set up to cater for their needs, meeting the trains, directing men across the city to other stations for their trains home, providing accommodation and, vitally, providing free food and hot drinks in the station buffets. My name's Tony Lawton. My grandfather was William John Lawton, who was allowed to join from the prison service at the Royal Engineers in 1915. By Early 1916, he was in France. He survived the Battle of the Somme. In the autumn of 1917, my father was living with my grandmother on the Isle of Wight. One day there was a knock at the door, and to my grandmother's surprise, it was my grandfather. The joy was short-lived because he had to return to London to be at Victoria Station at 7 o'clock the following morning. They arrived at Victoria Station at about 7. There was a great crowd of soldiers on the concourse, and at about 7.20, the soldiers were ordered to move on to Platform 1, and there was considerable confusion. There were children, there were wives and sweethearts. Many of the wives and sweethearts were in tears, as indeed were the children. And at about 7.40, the soldiers received the order to entrain. And there was more tears and more hugs and goodbyes. And my father was only five and three quarters of a year old at the time, but he was old enough to know that he might never see his father again. And that was their experience of the return to the front. from York to London's Victoria Station to meet Richard Slocum of the Imperial War Museum to see if we can find the spot where Richard Jack painted to return to the front. Let's see how we get on. Hello. Hi Richard. Pleased to see you. Welcome to London Victoria. Thank you very much. So we're going to go and see if we can find the spot where Richard Jack painted to return yep. to the front. The very spot. Fantastic. Let's go. go. Let's go. So, platform four. It is, yeah. So actually, if yeah. uh, it looks like the train is to the left of us, yes. uh, and when we're standing mm -hmm. yeah, uh, with so it we, to the right. We need to be on the other side of this train, don't we? We do, yeah, I think yeah. so. So actually, we need to go over one more I think, yes, platform. I think that's right, actually, isn't it? Do we uh, Let's have do a look that. around? Yeah. Okay. So we need to go towards the end of the platform. Yeah. So yeah, it seems like we're getting closer here because here we've got, we can see the uh, ironwork of the arches. Yeah. This is where... This is where it was painted. Back. Yeah. But it is quite something to be, to be here. What do we use our 
the railways for. We use them for holidays, for work, commuting, and things like this. But these it's such these a very guys, thing. yeah, off into great danger. Some of them may not have returned. May not return. No, may not see their their families and loved ones again. I mean, you can't help feel sort of apprehensive before a journey, even if you're going on holiday. But the, it's it's you can't imagine the kind of sort of anxiety and apprehension that they they would have felt that they, they might be going on the last journey of their lives, essentially. Incredible, that sacrifice that was made. Yeah, yeah. Between November 1914 and November 1918, 6,530,482 officers and men passed through Victoria Station on 14,800 special trains like the one in Jack's painting, with a train arriving every 15 minutes, every day, each carrying up to 800 officers and men. The painting must have had a resonance for every family in the country. No one was unaffected by the war. Jack's traditional painterly style gave the painting a mass appeal, and the softly focused faces meant that they could represent every man. And this makes it all the more appealing to the viewer. Jack showed the painting at the Royal Academy in 1916, and it was subsequently issued as a print, showing its popularity with the public. We can wonder why. Perhaps it was a reminder of their own loved ones. <laughs>